Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. I thought it would be cool to share with you how I clean my watercolor palette. Uh, this is a tin palette and this is the only palette I use to store all of my watercolors in while I'm using them. I normally don't mix in the tray lid, as you can see here, all of the orange up top. It's pretty messy looking. I use a separate mixing palette now, so I keep this a little bit cleaner than it used to be, but as you can see, it still gets really dirty and a lot of the paint is mixed together. You can especially see it in the yellow there. It has all the green in it. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a fluffy brush and it's not one of my best brushes, so grab just like a really cheap brush for this and I am using clean water and clean paper towels and going through and wetting all of the watercolor. Watercolor um, that comes out of tubes, it can be re-wetted at any point when it's dry, which is fantastic for cleaning a watercolor palette like this. That black smudge you see at the bottom, it's actually ink that I put in there and I couldn't get that out because ink is pretty permanent. But the watercolor can come out with just a really fluffy brush and some water. You just let it soak in, you get it wet, and then you use some clean paper towel to wipe it off. And then we move into the actual pans. So what I need to do first is I need to get out as much of the contaminated color as I can. So I'm starting mostly with this yellow, which is the worst one for sure. And I have to get this green out before I can refill the yellow with more paint because if I leave the green in there, it's just going to mix into all of my future colors and I really don't want that. So I start by wetting the brush and I have it pretty wet and I need to reactivate as much of the green as I can. So I wet all of the paint inside of there and then without putting the brush back in the water, I wipe it on the paper towel to get as much of the paint off as I can. And when the brush has less water in it, what it does is when you dip it back into the paint, it starts to absorb that water. So hopefully our goal here is to absorb that green paint out of there as best we can. So what I'm going to do uh, is just do the same process with each of the paints that have some contaminated colors in there. I wet the paint first and then once that contaminated color is reactivated I go back in with the brush and I let the brush soak up all of that color that I don't want in each single pan anymore. One thing I do notice that it's not going to be very perfect, uh, unfortunately, and for the most part that's okay because I do mix around my colors a lot anyway, so as long as the light colors are as clean as I can get them, the darker colors aren't as much of an issue, but I do go over them just in case there might be uh, some browns in the greens or something like that that I might not be able to see but could affect the color once I go to use them for a painting. After I go all the way around the palette, I do not have to let this dry at all. Uh, you can put wet watercolor paint on top of dry watercolor paint and then it'll just dry and it's, it's absolutely fine to do that. So I check each paint color on my handy paint color chart that I keep on top of the lid there and I'm just making sure that I match up all of the right colors because I do have different reds and different yellows so I really don't want to mix them up and I want to make sure that if there's two colors in the palette that are kind of similar when they're when they're dried that I get the right one in the right tray because that would be a very bad thing if I mix two different colors together. Now you will notice that the white is not watercolor. I have white gouache in my palette. And the reason I'm using gouache instead of watercolor is the gouache is a lot more opaque than watercolor is and I find that it mixes a lot better into the different um, tints that I want my colors to be and it makes them more opaque. With gouache and how it works is you can take white and you can mix it in with any color and you're essentially making a type of gouache with your watercolor by mixing the white gouache with a colored watercolor paint. 
So I have that in there to use for mostly if, uh, say I want to layer some yellow over the top of a darker color, I can mix some of that white in with the yellow and then I can add the yellow on top of a darker color in my watercolor painting. The bottom row are all of my dual chromes and metallic colors. So those all have the micas and the shiny pigments that I really, really enjoy using, though I try not to use them too much because they do not scan very well. And then as I go, I just make sure that I don't get to any paint on top of the lid uh, so that when I go to use the paints next time, they're not stuck together. Well, the paints won't be stuck together, but the lids will be stuck on there for sure. And that is about it. Uh, if you would like to see a full list of all the colors in my palette and how I have them laid out, I will put a link down below so you can go and check that out if you want to. After I add all the paints into this, um, it's just a matter of keeping it flat until they're pretty much dry so that way they don't, you know, slip off to the side or anything like that. So it's just sitting on my desk now uh, and I'll let it dry overnight and that should do it. I hope you guys found this um, interesting and helpful, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!